So welcome back to Real Business Roundtable. Please, if you enjoy this video, like, subscribe, turn on post notifications so that you never miss when we post a new episode. Um, but uh, today we're going to talk about something that we've, we've kind of hinted at it in the past couple episodes, but I want, you know, we've kind of gone into like body language and tonality and, and stuff. And, uh, you know, what that's all really about is about mastering the art of communication and especially in sales. Communication is like an art. You have to study it. You have to practice it. You have to, you know, get really good at it because once you do, it's almost like not trying to say it in a bad way, but or like in a malicious way. But once you get good at it, you almost have control over the outcome of a conversation or you have the control of, you know, the way someone's thought process is working during a conversation. And there's a lot of uh, different aspects of communication. For example, vocabulary, the words you use, using the right words to dictate the, you know, the, the outcome of someone's thought process or, you know, the volume, the way you say those words and the way you pronunciate and the speed of the way you talk and, you know, hand gestures, communications with your body, body language, and then also eye contact. Those are all different, you know, variables of a conversation that have to do with communication. And once you master these things, you know, you are going to do very well in sales. And it's it like I said before, it's like an art. When it so, com- yeah, when it comes to sales and you're trying to probe and you're trying to find out more about a customer, you need to make sometimes these hand gestures like this or like this or like this. And like like this would convey like like you care or this would mean like, Hey, you can, I I need to, I I need to know this number, you know, but you don't have to be exact. Give me a ballpark, rough number. Or even like something like the most this to like, like lifting up. If you're saying something positive, like we want to help your business truly get to the next level of success, like something like that. Yeah. And it just, it comes natural to me, but then I notice certain things and I go, okay, it's just the way I'm communicating. I'm communicating with my tonality, my voice inflection, my voice volume, uh, my my hand movements, my eye movements, everything. People are taking in this environment when you're speaking to them. And in sales, it's very, very important that when you say something, based on what it is, make sure it's appropriate on how you deliver it. For example, sales volume. That's something that we typically need to know when we're talking to a yeah. company. The company comes to us, yeah, 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 I want to grow. All right, where are you at now? And I always say, ballpark, you don't have to be exact. There's no shame. And I always preface it with there's no shame, meaning you're not going to be judged if you do 50 bucks a year. Um, But we're going to have to do some fixing. But like if someone's sales are really low, sometimes people are, they're shy to say anything. So I always say, hey, just a ballpark, rough. I always put my hand up like this, just a ballpark rough idea. What are you doing annually? And where do you want to be in the next three years? That's the, that's a critical question that we ask. And you have to just go in there sometimes gentle because they'll be like, Hmm, whoa, whoa. You know, what's this? Yeah. Some, you know, it's, it's a question that, you know, sometimes you'll get, no, I don't, we don't give out those, you know, those answers, but you know, when we're in a face to face uh, meeting with someone and we have to ask that question to understand, you know, what you explained, you know, sometimes what I'll do is I'll try to represent comfort, comfortness. Like I'll try to represent, like, like try to get them to be comfortable with me. So I'll just, I'll sit back, you know, cross my legs. I'll just talk to them, not like a salesperson, but I'll say like, you know, as a consultant, you know, I want to help you and I'm not going to go out and share all this information. I'm not here to, you know, get that from my benefit. I'm, I'm here just to purely find out and I'll sit back and I'll kind of like show like relaxed. I'll not, I won't sit up like a square. I won't be like aggressive with my, with my body language. I'll, I'll be very relaxed so that they're open more. They, they then sit back and they're like, you know, well, we're here, we're there, you know, and they're looking up in the sky and trying to think of what the numbers are and stuff like that. But that's yeah. what I would normally do. Customers will mirror you or you mirror the customers based on just say the vibe. If you want them to be more relaxed, then lean back in the chair. You know, if they're intense, um, you know, based on the situation, so you should always mirror the person you're talking to. But if it's going in a direction that's not in line with what you're trying to achieve, then move, move your body language towards what you're trying to achieve and come off more relaxed. 
I think I remember, I, I mentioned this story a long time ago. I used mm -hmm. to work with a guy years ago and we had a meeting about body language and he actually put his leg up on the chair did I talk about this? I don't think so. I don't think I've ever heard that. He no. literally like. Oh, I did. Yeah, he, but I don't no, think. But he. So we had a big meeting, and they were like, "Guys, when you're out on the road, body language is key. You need to you to make the client relaxed. You need to be relaxed." And they said, "You know, lean back in the chair, be relaxed, convey a relaxed environment so the client opens up to you." That this was in training. Well, Brian guy I used to work with I shadowed him for a long time he we took it to the next level we, <laughs> we, we were with a company and he was like Andy we have to be relaxed in the meeting make sure you're relaxed I go okay well I'm just I'm just sitting there with my clipboard I'm like I'm like 22 years old I'm like all right yeah <laughs> and he go, in the meeting he goes no lie I'm not exaggerating this is like a 50, 55 year old guy, sales veteran. Sales veteran puts his leg up on the chair like this. Now tell me, your sales volume, where would you like it to be? Hmm, interesting. Tell me more. When he put his leg up, the owner of the company, the CEO is a big company, 200 employees. Dude, the guy was like, and looks at me and he goes, now, and I, and I said to him, I said to Brian after the meeting, I go, didn't you see his eyes? He, he wasn't really cool with that, what you did. He goes, did you listen to the meeting that we had? He had an interesting accent. I can't even, I don't even know what kind of accent it was. Uh, it, he, was he was American, but he was just saying, didn't you listen to the meeting? You have to be relaxed. Was it a good meeting? It was an okay meeting, but it was just insane because the guy clearly wasn't jiving with him, putting his leg up. He's wearing uh, whoa, a suit. This well, guy's wearing a suit, and he just flops his leg up on the chair like this. It was I'd the actually, most insane thing. I, but, but but here's the thing: that's that's overboard. I would justify that. No, but listen, okay. no, but listen, no. That guy will never forget that meeting. Though. I will never forget that meeting. Yeah, and you will never. Yeah. <laughs> I will never forget that. That guy is a legend in my head, Brian Kavanaugh. Oh, you've mentioned him before. Oh man, he, dude, he's. I learned a lot about sales. I was. 22 years old, he took me out on the road, taught me so much. Every day at 12 o'clock, he'd tap his little Timex or whatever he had. He'd go, Andy, it's time for a sandwich. <laughs> every day. Every day. I don't want to get too much off topic, no, but I got to share this. So every, every day at noon, we'd be driving together. He'd be like in my passenger seat. I'm like, all right, Brian, where do we go now? I was really new in the industry. And he was, I was shadowing him. And he was like my mentor. And every day at noon, I would see the clock in my car and I'm like, oh, it's 11.59. Because after being on the road with him every day, I would learn his habits. 12 o'clock hits. Andy, let's get a sandwich. Every day at noon. So one day I was so sick of sandwiches. It was always like a turkey sandwich, like a, like a turkey, whatever, or what, like it was always a little, like, like this with the bread, rye, pumpernickel, whatever. You'd always go to these weird little diners. And I was so sick of sandwiches. And I said, Brian, why don't we try wraps? Wraps were really up and coming early 2000s. I was like, let's get a wrap. So we went to a place and I got like a chicken Caesar wrap. And he goes, oh, wow, I never tried this wrap thing. This is interesting. And I was like, he's like, what is it? I'm like, it's like a sandwich, but kind of like a sub. Try it out. And then like I, said, it's, it's, I said, it's really thin. It's not like a big piece of bread. We get it. And he goes, he goes, this isn't a sandwich. It's a taco. And he bites it. Oh my God, this guy was like salt of the earth. So funny. He wasn't like trying to be funny, but he was one of those people that wasn't like trying to be funny. He was just naturally so funny. nonchalant. This is a fing taco. <laughs> He's like, what is this? He's like, if I wanted a taco, I'd go to a Mexican restaurant. He's yeah. like, what is this? He got it. He's like, is this a burrito? And I'm like, no, it's a it's your turkey club, whatever you got. Mm. But it was wrapped in a wrap. Yeah, he made yeah. a big he just he went right back to the sandwich. Taco. A burrito. I like a burrito. This is a taco. <laughs> Did he have like an English accent? He was Irish as Irish oh, could be. Okay. He was Irish. No, but he was Irish American. Mm. He had this interesting accent. Where was he from? Dude, he's probably from Southie or something. Like, I, don't I don't know. know. He was like yeah. uh, he was like Boston Irish, like hardcore, like like real deal. Yeah. But he had this I can't explain the accent. 
he had a mass accent, but it had this like English like, Englishishness to it. Yeah. This is a f taco. Anyways, so back to voice. But, but so that was like body language. I mean, yeah. Like so he he overdid it in the meetings where he was overly relaxed. Oh, he did this other one. I forgot. He went in the chair way too slumped. I I, I was thinking. I go, is is he is he trying to be funny? But he goes, didn't you pay attention in the meeting? He'd always coach me. Andy, he'd sit back in the chair and he like in the in the in my car when we, after the meeting we'd talk about the meeting, and I go, why did you lean over like that? He goes, and he'd always reference the the training we had. He goes, didn't you listen to training? And I go, huh. yeah, but I go that was kind of overly animated where you're making the, the the CEO of this company go, what is going on? So there's such thing as overboard. You want to yeah. if you want to make that prospect or whoever you're dealing with to feel relaxed. You should convey a relaxed feeling. Like appropriate would be like this, okay, or like this, not like this, not with your leg flopped over, or just like cross legs or anything. But most of the time, like the body language that you use is to almost like help you pronunciate. You're almost acting out, you know, what you're trying to portray, and it comes off as confident. It comes off as, you know, like, like. Uh, I don't know how to explain it, like very passionate about, you know, what you're doing, what you're talking about, you know, just like doing different things yeah. that'll help you. But then at the same time too, you know, it's not just all about body language. It's all about the way you speak. It's a combo. So when there's different things that you can do when you're, when you're talking to someone and you have a point that you want to come across, maybe it's like a special invitation for something or an exclusive opportunity or whatever it may be. You always want to lower your voice mm -hmm. because when you lower your voice, people <clears throat> like naturally, you know, and I want to hear, and, lean into. And hear I, I want to give credit. I'm going to give credit to Jordan Bell for yeah. that. He yeah. teaches that. I agree with that. I've done that for years. Yeah. He puts that in his sales training. And when I saw it's little things like that, certain sales trainers out there, you can like weed out. Okay. This guy's good. The part of this guy's program is good. But like Jordan Belfort, it's a lot of the stuff that he says for sales training. I did already for many, many years, which, which validated to me that he's good. Yeah. He knows his, he knows his shit. Yeah. So when you lower your voice, it creates, you lean in. Yeah. That's what I was going to get to. Yeah. yeah so yeah. when you, when you like, if you're trying to get them to really focus in, maybe it's, you know, they're kind of, you know, they're paying attention to other things. You know, I always sit on the edge of my seat and I start talking a little bit quieter and I mm. hold my hands up and I bring it in right here so that they're focusing on me and I talk a little bit quieter so that they have to focus and normally you bring their attention out they snap back into attention and you're able to tell them you know well listen this that this that whatever but that's also huge because sometimes you know we'll sit back we'll have a great conversation we'll talk normally but then in other situations we have to talk you know more directly to them mm. quieter more calmer slower portraying confidence maybe an opportunity, whatever it may be, but their attention is going to come on you. Exactly. 100%. 100%. But yeah, so there's volume, there's gestures, but then also, oh, kind of like what I mentioned just now, it's eye contact. Eye contact is, is very important. When yes. you're, when you're in the middle of a conversation, you're like looking around, you know, it just, it doesn't, it, it makes you look like you're trying to come up with something. But, and that's not really good. You want to keep that eye contact so you can, you know, really hold their attention. And sometimes it can get like a little uncomfortable, to be honest, but you can really read someone and see how they react when you hold really good eye contact. And this isn't just in sales. This is everything. You know, whenever you're having a conversation with any, anyone, whenever, if I'm at a restaurant or if I'm, you know, this or that, I always try to hold good eye contact because it's just, I, I don't know why. It's just always something it's that a, I it's practice. A, it's important it's because you're trying to connect first you're trying to connect with them it's good to have eye contact but at the same time you got to learn how to break eye contact at the right time at yeah. the right time yeah. because then you'll come off weird <laughs> just, i think i talked about this already i was staring. like please yeah please buy <laughs> stone the rock yeah <laughs> oh my god but yeah so you don't want a weird creepily stare in their eyes and yeah you don't want to do that but it, it's communication in sales and in business is like a cocktail. You are creating an environment of multiple stimuli that they're receiving. The, the movement of your body, the sound of your voice, the tone, the inflection, 
the the movements of your hands, um, the way you look at someone's eye, the way you tilt your head, the way you say, mm hmm, okay. Like there's so many things that you're hitting them with within their environment that's creating a certain feeling. So you gotta pay attention and it's gonna take some practice. You're gonna go out there in the field and you're gonna speak to people and you need to understand that when you ask questions, if you bombard them with crazy stuff, they're gonna go like this. You wanna almost let them you gotta, talk most you, of the time. You gotta, yeah, open up, open up, you know, a little bit of a, you know, what do they call it? Um, the faucet? A little faucet here. Okay, fill your cup, get what you need. Okay, I got this information. Okay, get this information, this information. Okay, then you can put together an idea of what you could, problem you can solve. Yeah, you got to be a really good listener. That's also part of communication. Yes, though. but if, if I remember I had a really shitty meeting actually right down here. The business is no longer in business. He was one of these poker face guys that I mentioned before that the poker face doesn't work in business. It's like, dude, I don't know what you're trying to accomplish. So the poker face doesn't work. This guy was poker face during the whole meeting. And he's like this. And I think the last episode I did a face like that, he was doing that in the meeting. I was, when I was flipping out in the last episode, <laughs> I was so angry about this, this guy across the street down over there. He was so, he was doing this thing with his lip. The whole meeting with his hands folded, his marketing manager was like, please, Mr. CEO, we need to do something. We're failing. Do you care about your business? He's sitting there. Reminded me of like Elmer Fudd or something. I don't know. He was sitting <laughs> Another there. Another Elmer Fudd. And he was poker facing the whole meeting. And I'm talking to him, talking to him, talking. And he went, that's not pertinent to you or some weird responses. And he wasn't answering. He didn't tell me his sales volume. He didn't tell me his challenges. He was not participating in the meeting at all. But the marketing manager was filling me in on everything. She said, well, yeah, 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 yeah. And then he went like this. He put his finger up and he went, no more dialogue. <laughs> he said that, he said that in the f meeting. I'm like, I, oh, I gotta control myself. It's, some people, I guess, want to see their company crumble. It's some kind of like grand exit. I don't think they, they want to. I think they just like they just don't, don't know how, what to do, and they have they can't trust anyone to help them make that decision. Not everybody's and, trying to f you. Like I'm in a business of trying to help. Yeah, I I hate when <laughs> I I hate when I'm on the phone with someone. Like I'm you know not in face to face meeting, and they're like you know. You guys they call us all the time. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. They, they calls they, a day. They put you in the same box. I'm like, bro, I'm not even coming in here to sell you something. No, and what I'm I just... do when it comes to communication, what I do when someone commoditizes us and says, oh, guys like you, you do, do this and that. You know what I say? I stay calm. I just go quiet. And I say, I, I'm sorry that you went through, had a bad experience with other people. And I keep it. I don't go, no, 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 no. No, I don't want to do that. You're going to have a great time. No, 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 you no. You might meet some new people. No, no, no. And make some new friends. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No. I go, I, I go, I go, I, 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 I just come in cool and, and calm, cool and collected. I just say, I'm sorry that you had a bad experience with other people. If you look a little further, if you speak to some of our clients, you'll see that we do have a strong track record. We have a proven system. And, and unfortunately, there is a, a variety of skill sets out there in our industry. But it's one thing when you want to just redesign a website that anybody can do, or do you want to build an infrastructure which includes the right type of website built the right way to produce results. That's the difference. But the website is just a tool, a tool in the tool belt. You don't commoditize us with these knuckleheads. It's, there's multiple things, like how visible you are, your content, the content topic. Are you using data? Like, oh, it's a multi-tiered approach. So the, the, the web developer that didn't do you right five years ago, we're not the same guys. But sometimes in that situation though, when they say that they're trying to take the person out of the pitch, 
So, and you've got to maintain calm and professionalism during that, that, and this is an example of communication. You have to maintain. But sometimes, depending on who you're talking to, it's not always bad to kind of hold your ground because for me, at least in well, some I situations, yeah. I know, well, I know you do. All right. Yeah. But, some, <laughs> but sometimes in certain situations, like I am coming in, not even to sell anyone. My first call is not, I'm not sitting there. Oh, I'm trying to do this, 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 and this for you. Him. I'm call. I'm, but if they say, you know, you guys call me all day, I'm like, dude, I'm not like other guys. Like I'll oh, say that straight that. up. Yeah. No, but I'll literally, I'll put my personality back into the call and I'll say, dude, I'm not like them. Mm. I'm not like them at all. N no sales guys would talk to you like the way I'm talking to you. I'm coming to you as a person with experience to help you build your business. And then if I come in with a little bit of aggression, not offensive, but a little bit of aggression. I'm like, dude, come on. Like, like I understand you get a lot of calls, but I'm not coming in here to sell you the same thing. Then sometimes, sometimes they'll be like, all right. And I'll be like, listen, you're not wasting your time. And if you are, I'll give you back that time. Obviously you can't do that, but it's funny. And they'll make him laugh and you know, whatever. But some, there's different ways to handle it. And honestly, part of communication is, you know, understanding how to use your volume, how to use your hand gestures, how to use the eye contact, how to use all these things in certain situations to predict or to determine or to kind of control where the outcome of a conversation is going to go. And there's so many different ways to do this. And honestly, like if you're a gifted salesperson, it kind of just comes to you and it kind of, you know, I, I don't have a script for anything. I just kind of go with the flow and I do what I do. But in the back of my head, I'm always thinking about the things that we talked about today in this episode. Um, I don't think, I don't know if there's anything else you want to bring up, but I think, I mean, I, that's pretty much, I covered it all for me at least. So I, w what I want to just make sure people understand that it takes practice. You're not going to learn this stuff overnight. Commu proper communication mm -hmm is the key to any successful business development, sales, networking, raising capital, um, you know, explaining what you do to somebody. It, 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 when someone kind of talks to you and you gotta, you know, open up this door, open up that door, collect as much information as you can, you won't be able to collect all the information that you need in order to take the next step on whatever it is that you're trying to do without communicating in the right way that's going to make someone feel open and comfortable to share that information with you. Of course, if somebody has a problem, they have an immediate need, usually most business owners are going to get right into it. But then you're going to have the people that are kind of like this and you got to get them open up, take their arms down. So take somebody from this, bring a, have them be more open. That's going to create more opportunity for you. And again, practice, practice, practice. But you need, you need to first use common sense. You can't, you, you got to practice and learn. And if you screw up a meeting and you see when you screw up a meeting, teach, use it as a lesson yeah. and say, what did I screw up in that meeting? We do it all the time. Yeah. What did I screw <laughs> up in that meeting? And then not do it. <laughs> no, like little, little things. Like yeah. if someone's super petty about something stupid, then I'll say, okay, let's not have a plant in the meeting. Oh my God. All right. Look, <laughs> put the camera on me. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, you know, it's always about opening people up and I like, I, Sometimes it does actually happen, but like, I don't know if I want to say this on the, because like we do it a lot and it's what? like, I don't, we might have to cut this part out because I just don't know who's going to be watching this, but we're like, me. no, we're like, we're like in the, when we first see someone face to face, we're like, wait, you look really familiar. Oh <laughs> yes. Dude, wait, I don't know if like, cause wait, we do that a lot. I it's know, like, it works so well. So the, I guess, I guess the FBI said there's only like 300 faces in the world, right? <laughs> So we see so like 300 types of faces yeah. or whatever the number is. What is the we, number? We see so, yeah, look it up. We see so many people on a day to day that the chances of like, we see people that look alike or look really familiar. Sometimes I say it just to like get them to open up and to be fun, like to be comfortable. But like recently I said it and then come to find out. They're like the dad of someone I used to know. Yeah. <laughs> or like, if, remember that? Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yes, I didn't yes. know. I have no who that was but I, that's why i don't know if i want to keep this in but i mean no, that's fine no it's, it's totally a valid not. point it, yeah yeah so so <laughs> so sometimes people's faces look like somebody that we know and we're like hey do we know you 
And like something, what? Who? Where you from? Wait, wait. Where you grow up? And you it, look really familiar. <laughs> that happens. Like we're like, hey, hey, uh, you look familiar. Yeah, that's always the uh, that that happens a lot with people that I I've, I've seen at the gym. Yeah. Like I don't talk to them, I don't talk to them, but they, <laughs> I've seen their face every day, every day. Bench press, pull downs, <laughs> squats, cur- squats, squats, curls, squats, whatever. Face, face, face. Face, no name, no conversation, just face, face passing, face drinking water, face curling, face <laughs> passing, just face, 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 face. I'm so confused. And I don't know like, where this is going. It's just like grocery shopping and you're like, face. <laughs> yeah, I recognize you. Face. So just to wrap it up, so everybody understands when you're communicating with uh, in business, make sure you pay attention to how you speak, how you're sitting. Make sure that you are respectful. Make sure that you try to make the whoever you're talking to as comfortable as possible or in line with what you're trying to achieve from that conversation. But it's going to take practice. Yeah. You can study body language. Yeah. You can study and watch videos like this. But the best form of doing this the right way is going in the trenches and getting your hands dirty. Not literally, but speak to somebody. <laughs> like, also, what you can do is just interact what you can do to practice this stuff and to kind of hear yourself and see yourself is take your phone set it up record yourself saying something you could write a script it could be anything off the top just record yourself doing something see i can't do that and then ready and then ready turn the what when you're done turn the volume all the way down watch yourself and then turn the volume all the way up don't watch the screen listen to yourself and just now you can get a vibe for how you sound how you look and you can kind of critique those things and do some research and find out what you need to do a little bit better. You know, even if you're in a meeting, I don't know if this is like illegal, but record it. Yeah. Don't record yourself in a meeting. Unless you have permission from the prospect. If you're yeah, trying, you could, to, I've never done that. If you're, if you're doing like, you know, some kind of like coach, um, if you're like, Hey, do you mind if I film this meeting? I want to use it for coaching. Yeah. Or yeah. train. Or for We've tra- never done that. We should do that for training. Yeah. If, if somebody's cool with it. We should do that, yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us today on Real Business Roundtable. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please like, subscribe, turn on post notifications so that you get notified every time we post a new video. Also, check us out on Instagram for clips and updates, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.